Ahoy hoy! Here I be at Gen Con, the genest of all of the cons, the most Gen Con. Is it Gen Con 3000? No, because I'm not in the future. This is aisle 3000, I don't know why it's 3, I think there's like a thousand things. Oh, what do we see here? A, a Mr. Pond in the wild. Hello Mr. Pond. Um, this is the starting of the setups. We have if you're coming to see, brand new cases of stuff. What's shiny and new? Legendary Nikola Tesla. That's that's a new release, I believe. Um, regulators are somewhere, but I think they're packed up somewhere still. Because um, we haven't finished setting up, we've got the we've got the comfortable groundage. We've got some crates of stuff there, um, and we've got a massive hall full of stuff. I mean, all the way down there, somewhere, you can see upper deck, right off in the distance there. This is the main hall of Gen Con, setting up, and uh, I mean, there's not a lot else to show you, really. It's just Gen Con and they're setting up. Uh, you'll get to see more tomorrow when it is set. I don't think anyone's finished setting up yet. There's a lot of empty stands and wrapped up things ready to go. Shenkong 2019, baby. Me, 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 me. Ahoy. So, this is day minus one of Gen Con. Uh, we've done all of our setting up as much as we can do. So now I'm just having a little wander around. Not all the lights are on, people are still setting up. Um, tomorrow's the big day. Uh, so now I'm just having a quick wander around and seeing what's about. Uh, lots and lots is about, that's what's about. Um, I don't even know where to be, and some people have just got boxes here. Some people don't even have that. Some people like us are almost completely set up, which is great. Um, I much prefer coming in a bit early and setting up and then having a bit of like, you know, relax, not relaxing time because it's stressful, but you know, a bit of time to make sure that everything's ready just in case things don't go to plan. Um, that's the game I would hope to get. Nemo's War. I'm actually looking at picking that up. Um, so I'm going to go and have a look. Sorry guys. Thank you. Uh, just barging my way through. Yeah. Nemo's War. I will be coming back and picking that up. With the three expansion packs cloth bundle. I don't even know what that is. It's like a cloth. I think it's like a map or something. Cloth bundle. It's a, oh it's a big fancy map. Awesome. With the expansion packs. Oh I love it. Yep, getting that. And you will get to watch it because now that um, Straw doesn't live nearby, um, I'm thinking of doing some uh, solo games. I've got um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer Legendary, which is a card game, which I will be playing on the channel. Nemo's War. Hopefully I'll be able to pick that up. And, oh, lots of bright, shiny things. My Hero Academia is an anime, I believe. We've got Jaws the board game. Um, I'll be showing you lots more, obviously, once it's fully set up. Lots of board games. <coughs> oh, sushi roll. I think Chris wanted sushi roll. I'll have to text him and see if he wants me to bring that back if I've got space. Um, there is one thing I want to show you, which is a little way away. This is the problem with Gen Con, it's just so kin big that like, I could just walk for miles and still be finding new stuff because it's so huge. All of the things. More, more, more just stuff. Oh, cuddly toys. Who doesn't want some cuddly toys, right? Um, I do want to go over and show you the Fantasy Flight booth because who doesn't want to see that? Because it's huge and they've got all the new stuff. They've got new stuff for Legion, they've got uh, yeah, they've got the new Clone Wars box for Legion, I believe, here. 
Um, they've also got uh, the uh, Superstar Destroyer. Um, one of the new things from Upper Deck is James Bond Legendary. So they've got the car from the Living Daylights, the Aston Martin from the Living Daylights. Madness. That's cool, right? Uh, skiing along with Timothy Dalton in it. Just bonkers. Uh, oh, here we go. Here's all the fantasy flight stuff. You know what? As soon as they put it all in the display cabinet, I'm going to show you it now. Ha ha ha. So, there we have some of the epic trip things for X-Wing. The Imperial Raider, the Sea Rock Cruiser, um, the Tanti 4. And there we have the Super Star Destroyer. I mean, it's like a two foot long. It's chuffing huge. That's the normal Star Destroyer. And that's the Super Star Destroyer. It's bonkers huge. Oh, and here we've got some stuff they haven't even put out yet. Not final product. Just in case nerds like me come around. Lots and lots of X-Wing. Star Wars Legion. And they're lovely paint jobs. Oh, this is the thing that people have seen recently. Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker uh, operatives. Which is cool. Here we've got the Clone Wars box that we saw at um, Depticon, I think. G-Back looks nice. So you get one big G-Back or two Tauntauns. Looking good, right? So they've got loads of stuff. Here we've got like a Genosis table. Oh, that's the table where that Jedi got killed. Do you remember that? Uh, Jedi got killed in Order 66. Initiate Order 66. Look at this. This is the Fantasy Flight Cube. It is twice as big as our stall. I mean, that's just the Fantasy Flight Cube. And that's, I'm not, I'm not making it out. It's about twice the size of our stall. It's fucking bonkers. Ultra Pro with all their card sleeves. Might have to see if they've got sleeves for my copy of um, that game, the Dungeon Madness. What am I going up here for? See, it's just so big, I can't even look as cool mini on it over there. Simon, as they're now known. Oh, Firefly, yeah, that's the thing. Oh, and they've got the whole damn verse map, the big Vera one, with everyone on it. Oh, why am I I'm filming you? Well, I should be doing this. Filming me, even. Terrain, mats, more terrain, big crystals. I want this, the big thing. And you've even got spaces for all your cards and stuff. Super cool. Love it, love it, love it. Not gonna lie, I am super tempted to get all of the Firefly stuff. But I probably won't because I can't fit it in the bag. Call of Cthulhu, beginning readers. We've got Mantic with Hellboy. Which is super cool. We've got t-shirts over there. <gasps> Dune gonna totally be getting that when it comes out. I was really hoping it'd be here. They've got it here as demos, but they don't have it here to buy, which makes me a bit sad, because I want it. This whole section, with all these black walls, that's artists, just artists. I mean, obviously they haven't got any stuff up now. Now, if I remember rightly, Peterson Games were around here somewhere. There we go, got more games. I mean, I can't even show you all of the stuff because there's just so much of it. Medieval time style clothing with, oh, you can just smell the leather. Sniff the leathery goodness. How cool is that, right? We've got more stuff. Shovel Knight, that's the computer game which is now a miniatures board game. Who knew, hey? 
And here are people who haven't even haven't even started setting up yet. Haven't even started. I mean, just the just the logistical bonkersness alone is genuinely terrifying. Like, this is easily four or five times as big a salute, and this is just the main hall. I mean, what? How do you even get your head around it? I tell you what, you don't. You don't get your head around it. It just happens, and you're just glad to be here. Um, I'm starting to yabber now, but only because I want to get down to Corvus Belly and Infinity and see what they've got going on. Um, and I can see they've got one of these like cool, uh, I don't know what that is, it's like a hanging signage thing. That's a good idea, having a whole setup and then just covering it so people can't nick your shit. But here we're coming up to Corvus Belly. Definitely going to be buying stuff from here tomorrow. Because we've got the new Raging Hearts expansion, which I will be getting. We've got Valkyrie Elite Bodyguard, which I'll be getting. Um, they've hopefully got a bunch of mats as well, which I'll be getting. We've got tokens, which I'll be getting. A whole bunch of Aristea stuff. Because I want it. Yeah, mats. They've got mats. I want that. I want a mat. And hopefully they've got the War Snow Gorgon tokens. Yeah, they do got War Snow tokens, which I'll be getting them as well. So, hello, how, how are you doing? doing? Just all of the Aristea goodness. Definitely gonna be buying a bunch of that tomorrow. <laughs> it's gonna be gravy. So now I better head back. I need to take me three hours to get back to where I am. Like, I can't even. Yeah, I just. I know, right? it's good kids. Yeah. And here is a big cherry picker thing so they can put signage up. Pandasaurus Games. I don't even know. Chogdor the Burninator, the board game. Burninating they everywhere. That's what he's doing. He's burninating all of it. All of it. Oh, I mean, I'm just. I'm, over, I'm overwhelmed. I am left without any whelm left at all in my body. Tickets arrived to London. There's the Queen, there's, there's John Lennon. There's some bird, John Steed. John Steed? I think that's his name, I can't remember. From the Avengers, not those ones, the other Avengers. Oh my God, I'm just, see pens and more, they're not even here yet. Oh, yeah, we've got um, Escape the Dark Castle. They've got a new game out, Escape the Dark Station, I think, which is a science fiction version of that. Um, Wizard, Wizard's Wagon, a whole bunch of random stuff. They've got anime things. I don't imagine I'll get any demos, but hopefully I can buy some stuff. Got a game centre where they sell all of the things. I mean, I'm just exhausted just by being here. Show the loads of Esther in, that's a game. There's a Dice Tower, people from the Dice Tower, which is another YouTube channel. Don't know if they're as popular as we are. I've heard of them, you know, I've seen some of their stuff. I jest, they're huge and massive and infinitely large than we are. All dice. Oh, here we go, dice and stuff. Always want some more dice. These are nice. You know, I like these some orange dice, and they're very rich, rich, burninating orange. Lovely. Probably going to end up with some dice to take home, and some lots and lots of miniatures for dungeons and or dragons. We've got a chimera there, and a whatever that is, a death knell apparently. I'm confused already because I don't know a lot about it. Oh, we've got the old board game booster box. Lots of people buy those here. Um, and they've got a bunch of stuff in them. But we don't know what. It's a surprise. Um, I'm nearly back 
where I'm supposed to be. I hope they haven't left without me. Um, more dice, more dice. Love me some dice. I don't know if I need any more orange dice, but I'm going to get them because dice are good. Dice and toy soldiers are like the best things ever. Sorry about the lighting here. It's not great today um, because it's setting up and the aircon's not on because the doors are open so it's quite warm and muggy but we'll survive because we are troopers super troopers bikes are going to find you shining like the sun super par, trooper par shining on every one super par, trooper par oh there's my dudes can't get through this way got to go the long way around can I? Oh, I think I can get through this way as long as I'm a bit sneaky. There we go. And here we have the war cradle stand. With all the war cradle dudes. There's Jakey boy being all Jakey. And here we get to now see what's in the stand. We've got the great Thunderbird. Death from above ski. Uh, there's a, a couple of things missing off here. Daz is quite literally painting as we speak. Fire Eagle, regulators, which you'll be seeing me paint up at some point soon. Badly, obviously not as good as those ones, but I'll be giving it a go. Legendary Nikola Tesla, boo on him. Promo miniature, Yadzia Kuskusko, I think, and my boy. My big bad boy, legendary Vorket. Let that sink in for a while. That beastly mountain of flesh. Chomping on the parts of humans. Of humans. Nom 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 nom. He's big and he's beastly and um, I want him. He's going to pre-release at the moment. Should be coming out next month. So hopefully, I'll speak to you in a bit. Okie dokie. So here we are, looking at some of the stuff for Dawn of Madness. If you follow the channel, you will know that we play Deep Madness, um, which is bonkers and scary and evil. And this is some of the stuff for Dawn of Madness, which is a prequel game that will be coming to Kickstarter. And we will be on it like a car bonnet. Oh look, it's a scorpion monster with a person where the scorpion ting is. That's just wrong and weird and I love it. Lots of weird gribbly things. And here are some painted models that will be coming out for Deep Madness in the Kickstarter which we've got coming. I particularly like this guy, oh, this guy, who's kind of crucified with his face all opened up. Because who doesn't want that, right? Lots of weird gribbly beasts. And here we have Dawn of Madness coming to kickstart soon, which we are going to be in on. Hi. Uh, and it's going to be super fun ski. I don't imagine I'll get time for a demo. And Daz, who's over there, was just showing me this stuff from Celestial, which is cake up in Teenut Bonkers. Look at these guys. The camera does not do them justice, that's all I can say. You've got a guy with a mouth for a belly, but the, the depth of the sculpt is just awesome weird kind of semi techno organic cyborgish weirdness demonic angelic just whoever comes up with this sort of stuff is probably mentally ill but that's okay by me some spider queen chick at the back who looks amazing I mean, I would tell you stuff, but I mean, you can see it for yourself, it's just insane. Look at this chick. She's kind of hovering around and whatnot. 
There's this, oh, reflections. There's this mermaid lady at the back and she's got like a strand of DNA, like magical in her hand. Nuts. I don't even have words for these models. They're just crazy. Look at this guy, look at him. Kingdom Death meets Crazy meets Cthulhu meets I don't even know anymore. Nuts. And even these little scaraby beetle things are awesome. Love it. Oh and there's a reflection of a me. It's just nuts. Sorry about the reflection in the cabinet guys, there's not a lot I can do about that. Just bonkers. Love it. Love this guy with the mouth. So good. Vaguely nurglish. But expect Dawn of Madness. As soon as we get the kickstart for it, we'll be getting it. Good times. Okay, so you're being blinded by the light, but you're also seeing a large inflatable area plane because I'm over at the stand for Dust USA. Oh, Dust. Specifically because, so Dust you may recognize as being a kind of World War, Weird War II themed thing with big stompy machines and gorillas. I think they're Nazi gorillas, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, and mech robot things and stuff, but so kind of semi-recently they've also had Cthulhu-esque things. Spawn of Cthulhu, Migo and Nyarlathotep. And sticky star spawn and all that kind of jazz. Who doesn't want more Cthulhu in your weird war 2 game, right? So if you want that kind of thing, go and check out Dust. How you doing, alright? Doing great, how are you? Okay so far, but it's early yet. Yeah. And now we've got the table all set up. Uh, it's on a board, like a grid thing. Uh, I've heard good things about it. Loads of stuff. And there is just some images of all of the things. Friday morning. Uh, I'm exhausted already. Well, it's only Friday morning. Um, hopefully I'm going to get some chance to film today, uh, but it should be good. See you in a bit guys. Boop. Hello, it's going to focus on me in a minute, I promise. Look at that, look, there's, there's stuff. It's not focusing. Here we go, look, there's LRP equipment. Shields and swords and all that kind of jazz. Loads of it. Oh, that's the zoom. Here over here, we've got some people, we've got Funko Pops. Because people like Funko Pops, right? Uh, here we've got um, Fortune and Glory. Do you fancy this actually? That looks really cool. We travel around in the world and do Indiana Jones type stuff, which is cool. Uh, Shadows of Brimstone, which is a, mm, well, a miniatures board game with stuff. Um, some more, signing more fun. Here for the Guar signing. Uh, no, I'm, I'm just wandering around being, a, being an idiot. Thank you. The Guar, Guar, who are a musical group, are signing things. Um, honestly, it's halfway through the Friday and I am on fire from the knees down, which is badness. We've got a whole thing of Pokemon cards and. Uh, stuff. Let's do it this way. Uh, we've got board games everywhere. I mean, I don't even know what I'm doing. Um, board games over there. There's a bunch of board games. There's there's all the magic cards in the world over here. All of the magic cards. All of them. They buy them. They sell them. Um, we got we got t-shirts. There's a whole bunch of t-shirts for sale. There's there's TT Combat. They're here. There's a dude in, in, in a 
in a fancy dress. I'm going to try and find something cool to show you, uh, and then I'm going to show it to you. Uh, but I don't know when that's going to be or what it's going to be. It's in a bit. Okay, so here we've got a cool little game called Humes. Humes. They will be um, coming to Kickstarter soon, I believe in the next couple of months. And you've got these cool, weird little um, robot things. And you're mining. You're on a planet, you can see the board through there. And you're mining for stuff. And you've got various little robots. Some of which are small and cute like this. Some of which are bigger weird like this. How cool are these things, right? There's a guy called Flapchat. That's a good name for a dude. And this will be coming to Kickstarter soon. I think it looks really cool. Looks really different. Sorry, mate. Sorry, I do apologise. I just wanted to get some footage of these things because right. they're super cool. So, that's Lots it of it. weird and wonderful things. Where to go? May I? One, two, you may, but pick up three. three. I mean, look slow. at this thing. Slow. He's got a bit of a work in progress, that guy. Oh, he looks <laughs> awesome, though. So, Lots three. of okay. weird little dudes. Uh, oh, this is a one day? Yeah. And this and is the stuff you're after. Because it looks like yeah. I see the two oh, years, yeah. so that's yeah. going to be another one. There we go. Wow. That's pretty cool. There it is. Sure. Wow. That is Humes, it's called. Coming to Kickstarter soon. Really want to get a demo, but I don't have time at all. Uh, but it's going to be awesome. Hopefully I'll get a chat with the guy tomorrow morning. Um, so I'll let you know. Bye. Ahoy. So here I am at the Star Wars Legion and Star Wars thing booth, which is actually Fancy Flight Games. Um, and there's a reason I'm here, because I'm looking at some of the cool stuff. So here we have some of the new releases slash coming releases for Star Wars Legion. We've got the Dewback Rider, who looks pretty damn cool. I'm glad he hasn't got the stupid feet like he did have in the uh, New Hope film when he had those weird claw feet. But looking proper cool. They look lovely all painted up, all professionally. Shore Troopers from Rogue One, I believe. Luke and Darth, the operative expansions, which will be out at some point, not sure when, but want those. Because that's proper Luke with his green, le green lightsaber, nice. Uh, got some Rebel Veterans, there's the uh, downed Apset Tauntauns. I thought they smelt bad on the outside, lols. But up here we've got something shiny and new just for. Uh, the Gen Cons, Star Wars Armada, Onaga St Class Star Destroyer. How cool does that look? Coming for Armada. Some sort of big Uber gun in the middle. Looking pretty tasty. And also, we've got this huge thing, which is about, I don't know, like a foot long? An Adiri Starhawk, a, a big massive rebel ship for Star Wars Armada, which looks awesome. Not sure what this thing on the front is. Oops, this thing looks to me like launch bays for lots and lots of fighters. That's pretty sweet, right? Fucking awesome source. Got the hand paint. Obviously, we've got the massive Super Star Destroyer, which is actually available to buy at Gen Con for 200 of your space dollars. Looking super cool. And down here, we've got some of the stuff coming out for uh, Legion Clone Wars. Yeah, wait, I won't go. We've got Clone Captain Rex. It's like a commander expansion for your clone dudes. Got some more clone troopers, battle droids, Roger Roger, Count Dooku, 
That um, Trade Federation battle tank looks pretty big. It's pretty chuffing huge. 60 quid's worth of huge. I'll get that in I love the, ex the crashed escape pod with R2-D2 and C-3PO finally in Legion. Admittedly there'll be objectives but it's still pretty cool. Um, really love those battle droids. Got a feeling if me and Straw go in on this, I'll be playing Battle Droids. He'll be playing um, Clone Warriors with Obi Wan Mook Kenobi. And this is something super cool that's coming for Legion: a battlefield uh, expansion, which is the Imperial Bunker that you will recognise from Return of T Jedi. That's a big old bit of terrain, and I love it. I want it now. Can't I have it now. So yeah, just some stuff from the Fancy Flight Bluth. Um, there's some X-Wing stuff as well, but you know, we don't need to see that because we don't play it. I don't even know what it is, X-Wing stuff. But here we have, from Atomic Mass Games, sorry mate. Uh, Straw won't care, but I will. So, for those of you keeping up at home, you may well know that Night Models uh, don't have the Marvel license anymore, but they are Atomic Mass Games is actually making a game called Crisis Protocol, which is based on the Marvel Universe. It's clearly very much a uh, comic rather than MCU based. Lovely paint jobs on these. I love the yellows on the Hulk to really emphasise his radioactive greenness. Venom with his big old tongue. Modoc, you don't see a lot of Modoc about. Loving the core set with Red Skull and his Tesseract. Captain America throwing his mighty shield. Ah, oh, Baron Zemo at the back there. Not a lot of love for Baron Zemo normally. Not 100% sure on Spider-Man. I think his pose might be a little off. Love the um, Otto Octavius though. He's cool. Ultron looks good. Nice mix of his comic and MCU kind of variant. And we've got loads of more stuff. Thor with his awesome hammer of awesome. An, oh, that's a nice one. Rocket, Raccoon and Groot. And Groot's kind of pushing into the ground with the tentacle coming out. That's cool. Loki looking there, looking cool. 16, remember. Loads of cool stuff. So, should be good. I'll show you a table. I've got a table over here. Somehow Ultron looks even bigger on the table than he did in the cabinet. Scale, I guess. Lovely looking table. Morning, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm okay so far. <laughs> Surviving. Yeah, halfway there, still alive, it's all good. But only just. Yep. If I could get a demo later on, I would, but I won't have time. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, man. I, I can give you a quick just snap of suppose. That would be great. May I film it if you wouldn't mind? Yeah, and just kind of explain how the cards work. Yeah, that would be awesome. Everything. Thank you. Yeah, so a lot of the game is depending on power uh -huh. for superpowers. That's what these green tokens are on the characters. If you don't At the beginning of every round, um, each character gets a power. Uh -huh. Likewise, when, for every damage they take during the game, they get a power. So okay. it helps them build, there's more than ways part to get power than just at the beginning of every round. Mm -hmm. So here's the, the player card. Um, everybody brings 10 min, um, characters to a game. Okay. And they'll, each character will, or person will supply one mission card. Okay. So that there will be two mission cards for the game. So you'll be, both players will play on both mission cards. Oh, cool. um, not just the one they brought. Uh, the big thing on these mission cards is at the top it'll talk about how much threat will be involved in the, the mission that they're playing and that's going to tell, determine how many of the 10 characters they bring that will actually make it to the game. Right. So nice. if, if, if you were to bring a 17 point threat card and I was to bring a 14, whichever mm -hmm. one of us had initiative would choose if it's a 14 or 17 point threat point okay, game. Okay, cool. So then those are going to be in play and what that determines is here, so Red Skull's threat is 4. Mm -hmm. um, so then you would build 17 threat of characters so you can see they've got some 4, 2, Four, mm -hmm. so it kind of tells you how many of the ten you're actually bringing. Okay, 
this number here is going to be the size of the character. Mm -hmm. um, size becomes important. Um, all of the terrain will have size because things can be thrown at people. Mm -hmm. So it matters bigger, so it's less smaller, whether you can actually throw it or not. Uh, medium is what the M stands for here. There's small, medium, and large. Mm -hmm. Those pertain to the maneuver templates. All right. So here's a small and medium, for example. Awesome. You just put the figure at the one end, move them to the other. It goes up to 90 degrees. So that's how you move characters around. The um, six here represents Red Skull's health. Okay. So when he gets six damage on him, he will become stunned. Mm -hmm. um, he cannot be attacked anymore for the round, and he cannot activate or do anything for the rest okay. of the round. When the round's over, you check for if all the characters that have, are at their full health damage. You would then flip their card over, and they're now on their injured side. Oh, cool. Most of the stats will stay the same. Some will change slightly. Mm -hmm. Once the character reaches their health on this one, they are then eliminated from the game. Okay, cool. So it's kind of it's a way to get all the characters through at least two rounds of play. They're not going to get knocked out and wipe. You can't gang up on one character and remove them from the game, cool. which is pretty nice. This number here represents their defensive dice. Mm -hmm. There's going to be three different types of attack attackers: physical energy and mystic. Mm -hmm. So these are the different attacks that Red Skull has for example. So this one's a physical, these ones are energy. So if Red Skull is attacking somebody with physical, mm -hmm. they would check their physical defense number. That's how many dice they get to roll awesome. in their, in their, um, for their physical defense. And that, and that stops people like the Hulk being just like, yeah, he's really good at physical but not good at magical and then that allows you that kind of, not paper, scissors, stone, but like that kind of vibe yep. where you need to bring a mixed group of dudes, yeah? Correct, yeah, so there's better because you can see Black Widow, for example, she's got four here but only two here. Yeah. So she's really good at certain types of attacks, so you may want to, even though this attack may be, may be better for you, you may want to attack her with uh, the, the energy mm -hmm. because she's weaker at the energy. <coughs> sure. So it kind of makes sense there. And so all of the different attacks will have different abilities and specials that they could um, do potentially. Um, this number here is going to represent the range mm -hmm. of how far, how close they have to be to you. Yep. These here are the range rulers. There's a two, three, four, and five. Mm -hmm. um, the width of any of them is range one. Oh, okay, cool. So that tells you the different. Um, and I love the, uh, you know, the kind of that like energy blast vibe going on. Yeah, and did you and check it's out the painted nice. ones in the I case will, if you yeah, didn't see those? And then this here is going to represent how many dice they're going to use during that attack. Uh -huh. And you can tell some of them get better. And when I was talking about the power, this is how much power it takes to do that attack. Sure. So this one's a much better attack, but it's going to cost you four power to do it. Awesome. Down here is going to be any kind of special abilities they have for their character. This simple represents that it's a superpower, mm -hmm. so it counts as one of their actions to do it. Mm -hmm. And most of them will have power costs too. This one's going to be free. Some of the characters will have a leadership ability, so this mm -hmm. is the star. Only one uh, part of your team can have a leadership ability, sure. so if more than one have it, you have to choose, okay, this is my leader for the game. Cool. And then all of the characters will be able to use this ability based on the leadership. Awesome. So that's kind of how the cards work here. Wicked. There's only one type of die uh -huh. for the game, so it's used for defense and attack. Yeah. So this is going to represent a hit. Uh -huh. This is going to represent a block. Uh -huh. This is a critical. Mm -hmm. For every critical you roll for attack or defense, it counts as a hit or a block. Okay, cool. And for everyone you roll in your initial roll, you get to roll in that many additional die. Oh, nice. As part of your attack. And keep going? And, no, you only do it the one time right, for your initial cool. roll. Um, th this symbol is a wild. Mm -hmm. um, these ones also count as a hit or a block, but a lot of the um, attacking abilities will say for every wild you roll, this happen. Oh, okay. Like it'll count for two damage or you get a power for it or mm -hmm. your opponent loses a power for everyone. Sure. So things of that nature. This one is a fail. Okay. The only difference between this and a blank is this cannot be rerolled. So if you have a, an ability that says reroll X amount of dice, sure. you can't reroll these because they're, they're potentially locked. Okay, cool. And the game just goes um, back and forth alternating. It. Um, you activate a character, then your opponent activates one. You get two actions. Mm -hmm. First action you can do is move. Mm -hmm. Second action you can do is attack. Mm -hmm. um, third action is use a superpower. And the fourth action is you can shake. If you have a poison token on you uh -huh. or some kind of a limiting <laughs> ability, you should basically you shake it off and now you're free of that burden. And could you like move twice or attack twice? Yep. You could do them in any you order. You can do anything like twice that. in any order you want. Awesome. And there's gonna be different types of interaction <laughs> things you can do. So like in this example for the, this game, if you're within range one of this token, uh -huh. you can perform an interact. It does not count as an action, but mm -hmm. it costs you one power token. So you spend a power, you then get to interact with this one. In this mm -hmm. case, you pick it up, put it on your player card. Mm -hmm. At the end of the round for everyone you're holding, you get a victory point. Awesome. The game is played over six rounds or until someone scores 16 victory points. Wicked. Yep. Nice. 
And if one squad gets completely wiped out, then th that's also a game ending condition. Mm -hmm. But they've really made it more point based, and, it's, and with the whole flipping of the card, not being able to yeah, double yeah. him, it's, it's hard to do. I'm yeah. told they've seen it happen once during play testing that a lot, of, most of the games are either six rounds or to the 16 points. Awesome. Yeah, yep. I love the um, kind of physical energy, kind of willpower vibe going on. Yep. Yeah, I love it. Stop you from being just like, yeah, the Hulk is awesome. Well, I mean, he is awesome, but, but there are ways around it. Yep. You mess with his mind, and he's going to go bad. You know, yeah, yeah. able to deal with it as much. Awesome. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, I do no appreciate problem. it. Cheers. No problem. Cheers. Uh, hope you have yourself a great day. You Don't too. be too exhausted by the end of it. I'm working on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. If I could get a demo, I'd love to. Yeah. Uh, yeah and we'll it's be great to see that it's more kind of, although there are hints and kind of nuggets from like the MCU, it's much more comic based. Yes. You know, it's more about the, that kind of background. So that it gives you so much more not free reign but, but ability to do things with different versions of characters and stuff moving forward so uh, yep. I'm wishing you lots very good things lots of options awesome yes well have a great day you too thank you cheers and here are the painted versions of the uh, range templates which look super cool with all of their magic vibe and that's got to be uh, what's his name uh, Cyclops's vibe love it sorry to uh, interrupt um, you yeah, know when are, we, when are we thinking a release date for this? Uh, I'm, the, the announcement was quarter four. Okay. And yesterday they were saying fall. So okay, I'm thinking cool. earlier in quarter four so, than later based on what they're later. telling me. And it's straight to retail or Kickstarter? Straight to retail. Awesome. Yep, and they're, they're already in print. They're oh, already wicked. being printed. So, um, And Atomic Mass Games is mm -hmm. the name of the studio, brand new studio. Awesome. Um, so this is their first game coming out. Their website launched yesterday. Oh, cool, So that cool. would be the best place to go to. Atomic, AtomicMassGames.com. Atomic Mass Games. Yep, that's where they'll kind of give all the info Wicked. on it, so. Well, check it out. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. your time. Awesome sauce. I don't know how much straw will play it with me, but it will definitely do really well at the shop, I reckon. Um, so, Wildstorm Games. Might be able to get it from there soon enough. Um, I better back, go back to the stall, because it's, uh, we haven't quite opened yet. Um, it's literally first thing on the Saturday, and I would like a lie down, because napping is fun. Um, I don't know what else I'm going to get to see before then. I guess we'll see what we can see, right? Uh, there's lots of role playing stuff. <laughs> I don't know how well you can see this, but it is one of the best t shirts I've ever seen. Remember when Robocop shot that dude in the dick? I mean, why not, right? That is a t shirt for the ages. Um, yeah, so I'm going back to the stall. Already exhausted. It's it's Saturday morning. Uh, if I can get some filming later, I will. But I don't know if I'll be able to or not. Um, hopefully, see you in a bit. Okie dokie. So here we've got a game called Fallen Land. Post oh, excuse me. Post apocalyptic board game. Uh, so it is set in a post apocalyptic version of the US of A. And it's kind of an area control, uh, like, I guess, risky type of game. But you've got little post-apocalyptic wasteland groups. So you've got the Sigma Corporation. You've got the Sons of Neptune and various other dudes. It's pretty cool. You've got the Regulators, Roundup, Ride Up even, and the New Federalists. Looks pretty cool, right? There's a game in progress or ready to go. Uh, and yeah, you get little dudes for your faction with weapons, missions to do, tokens and dice and all the fun stuff. Loads and loads of cards. Looking good, right? So. Got Bushido over there. I'm gonna have to do a poo in a little while. Uh, lots of cool stuff. What we got? Over? Oh, dice, dice. Oh, we've got Black Panther trying to claw someone's face off. One of my favourite things in the entire world. Lots of lovely dice uh, from Metallic Dice Games. Lots of metal dice. That's a big old metal D20. Love it. Sorry, dude. Um, we've got t-shirts and stuff, we've got, I mean, I just don't even know what to show you, because there's so fucking much of it. 
board games. Little little one-off board games that I've never even didn't even know who they were. Lots of Magic the Gathering stuff. We've got swords. We've got clothing. We've got Waves of the North Sea. I mean, swords, obviously, why wouldn't you have swords at Gen Con? And knives, and they look like fancy stuff. We've got some skeleton hand, Wolverine claws, Cat's America shield. I mean, just loads of cool stuff. So, we haven't officially opened yet, which is why it's really empty. Give it about half an hour and this place will be rammed. Uh, loads of second-hand role-playing game stuff, which I looked at and unfortunately couldn't find anything that I needed, which was a bit disappointing. Although, actually, I will have a little look to see if they've got anything for... E-F-G-H-I. Sorry, guys. Oh, just squeezing through. Awfully sorry. Oh my bad, I'm now totally in your way. I'm gonna I'm gonna go away and be out of your way. I apologise sincerely. Uh, but it looks like they don't have any nominee stuff which makes me sad, but that's fine. More secondhand role playing games. I did look for a nominee and I did look for uh, Hollow Earth Expedition. <coughs> Power Rangers, Heroes of the Grid. Sky magic. That's cool, right? University Games have got a Rubik's Puzzle thing. Uh, we have got the Artemis Project. Don't know what that is. Uh, hence, all of the stands have been covered up as well because well, they're not open yet. Some people are about selling things, but most aren't. <laughs> Ask me about Harzi's dice. I won't because I've already got some. Ooh, these are nice. Oh, I like these Gen Con dice. Sorry. Um, in fact, I'll see you in a bit because I'm going to buy some. Hello. It is Sunday morning. Didn't even know what day it was. Uh, I don't really know what to say except that I'm exhausted. There's lots of stuff going on still. Uh, lots of ball, Fireball Island. That's a game. That's, uh, it, I think it's a reprint of an old game from way back when. Which looks cool. There's little planes. It's like a big Axis and Allies type vibe game called Hearts of Iron. Um, loads of stuff. Uh, hopefully, I'll get a chance to have a go uh, chat with the humans guys later on, he says, hopefully. Um, we've got pocket watches and doodads and canes and stuff. It's Gen Con. Uh, lots of stuff still covered up because it's Sunday morning and we haven't opened yet. Um, we've got a werewolf for... Ultimate Werewolf, uh, which is a game that a lot of people play. Um, don't know what this is. Greenbrier Games, they do some stuff. Helios Expanse, a uh, bunch of stuff. We've got nerd things like Star Wars nerd stuff. Uh, Something that I'm super pumped for that I've shown you already. I am super pumped for it. It's June, the board game. I'll definitely be getting it. Um, I haven't pre ordered it yet. I probably will. Um, I was tempted to get the Uber Firefly pack with all the Firefly stuff, but I, um, I don't think I can fit it all in my suitcase on the way home. Um, here. We've got Prototype Press, so Riot Quest and War Machine and Hordes and Monpok. Now there's some cool stuff I wanted to show you from Monpok. Oh, sorry buddy. Um, so Monpok is Monster Apocalypse by Private Press. It's a miniatures game. Let's just show you a little bit of it. Uh, so, 
is this. We've got giant monsters fighting over buildings. Kaiju style. Think Pacific Rim, think Godzilla. We've also got tiny little tanks. And monsters of various kinds. And this is the kind of thing, Monster Apocalypse. So you've got two fa main factions with different sub-factions within them. You've got the Protectors, who in this case are these guys with like fighters and bombers and big kite, uh, robots to fight stuff. And then here you've got the Destructors, who are the big robots. They also have a bunch of other stuff. And these are the new releases. You've got uh, Cybercon, who's an Ubercorp international monster with giant robots and Mechagodzilla type things. You've also got this uh, lady who's like the attack of the 50 foot woman kind of thing, holding a gorilla. You've got large gorillas in combat suits that look like mechs. And then even bigger large uh, King Kong style gorillas who are super cool. If I was gonna get this, that would be a faction I'd be interested in, definitely. Because who doesn't want giant gorillas? They look freaking awesome. They're coming out June, July, so they should be out the new. Um, I've heard that it's a bit pricey, but um, it's not something that I've actually managed to get into yet. There's a Darren in the wild. Hello, Daz. Just looking at Monster Epoch stuff. Uh, and this is a new game, I think, called something. Like, this is your Infernals. Infernals. Is this a faction for... Brand new faction. Brand new faction brand for Warmer Horse. Lots of evil looking demon type things. Love They've that. They've come to claim the souls that they are owed. Oh, nice. Loving that gate. It looks awesome. Loving these... Sorry, guys. Loving these fleshy, grubbly things. Lots of cool stuff. Yeah, not bad. How are you today? Sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I could do with another couple of hours in bed. Yeah, exactly. And then maybe a whole other day in bed as well. <laughs> Just to round it up. Oh yeah. One more day. I believe in you, man. You too. Boom. We can do it. So there's some stuff. It looks cool, right? Uh, here's the thing coming from Keep Simon. Trudvang Legends. We play Trudvang role playing game on a Tuesday night sometimes. Good times. Um, and Trudvang Legends seems to be a legacy type game uh, with uh, elements of like Gloomhaven where you unfold the box and you find new things and then you put stickers on and stuff like that. So that should be cool. Um, but I'm going to shoot off and see if I can get an interview with someone. See you in a bit. Ahoy hoy! I'm here with Mike. Um, as I said, I'm trying to get an interview about Hunes, uh, which is this cool board game, uh, board slash miniatures game. You've got, uh, you know, it's easier if you tell you tell us about it. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, good. Thanks, Matt. Uh, good to be on the channel. So let me explain how this works. There's a whole bunch of uh, modular boards which make up a alien planet or a part of an alien planet, and you represent one of these little timid aliens. It's particularly nervous about uh, getting down onto the planet. So what you do is you would buy these um, these aliens over here on auction. Um, <clears throat> there's a crazy bunch of them um, that have uh, basically <laughs> become available on various slaving ships, and uh, your guy has uh, no chance but to buy them. Okay. And uh, that's the only way you can actually mine the planet. So. Various aliens come up on auction each round, and uh, depending what you get, um, you can actually use your little bidding drones, which look like a bit, little bit like that. You open them up, you put in your currency basically, and uh, once you're happy with your bid, you put it onto the card, and uh, obviously hope that your bid's going to be enough. Other players can at times obviously bid on the same thing. Whoever gets the the highest bid is going to win the alien and uh, then you launch onto the board um, via various tunnels and uh, the, these tunnel type ravine things and try to make your way to the mines and these are the these are the mines 
Um, some of them are slightly better than others. It's the plus one and the plus twos over there. Um, yeah, and as soon as you mine, you get this delicious green stuff. It's the uh, these tokens, obviously made in a special way. Yep. Um, that, that, that identifies them. But the aliens themselves are quite special. Well, we hope so. We kind of <laughs> they so, look you totally unique, definitely. So these guys, many of them, you can actually hide things in them. So if you look here, I've got a I've got a hard card hidden here. Um, if you look down here, I can uh, put little tokens into the top, um, store them over here, and uh, based on sorry, just I can then rotate this little dial, and out they pop. Um, when I need them, of course. <laughs> nice. So they've all got different um, little abilities. They can also be upgraded. So this little guy I'm going to upgrade with a little, what we call a sudorer. This allows him to s extract things out of the atmosphere. And I might also upgrade him with, let's just say, a... Yes, let's go with a little nanobite here. And that he also has a slot for. So during the game, you can upgrade your guys just to become better. Um, Definitely, <laughs> I hope, <laughs> a very different kind of game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I see you've got custom dice. <coughs> yeah, so a whole bunch of custom dice. Yeah. Nope. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, just the thing. But also, what I really like uh, is I noticed earlier on the custom dice, they all make sense on a little uh, chart you get. So you can hide everything, as well as your bidding, I believe. You hide your yes, bidding, Yes, you, you hide your bidding, that's right, yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of bluffing, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the aliens have, as you were showing, some secret compartments. Mm -hmm. So this big boy over here, called the Hover Cataclysm, has some s small sort of slots that you can hide things in. Again, a kind of little dial mechanism. Um, and then a bunch of little slots to attach things into. To power up his weapons Just to, and stuff yeah, like that. Just to power up the weapons and that nice. kind of thing. I love it. I mean, it's such a unique looking game. There's a, a love that you've used, kind of the symbol of the H, yes. which, is, which is this kind of also matches this symbol, as you can see there. They're the same kind of symbol, and that kind of replicates itself in the way the, the plugins work as well. I know it's a little thing, but it just really, things like that, you know, little attention to detail really make me happy. I love the bright colors, it kind of looks. Um, I wouldn't say childish, but really kind of vibrant, you know? Right, thanks. Um, and and yes. would you mind telling me, you were talking to me yesterday about some of the, the, the background uh, yes, because, yes. Of, because of where you're from. Because where I'm from. So one of the things we <laughs> obviously quite, um, we're always quite concerned about is little things like, um, this, well, the concept of the environment. And I say a little thing, it's a very big thing, obviously. Yeah. Um, so that part of the game is just sort of showing the kind of rampant sort of sad ex exploitation of the planet mm -hmm. um, and the other thing which is also the a very kind of strong theme that we've got is that these poor little aliens are sort of slaves mm -hmm. that you are actually buying so it's kind of a, a thing on the whole sort of sort of sad nature I guess of a lot of the industries that we see today you know sure. yeah uh, and even though I, I know these guys your little drones <coughs> yes, they look yes. Like little rhinos yeah, that's it yeah that's, like, kind of that's it they field. look like little rhinos and, and, and back home we have a real problem with rhinos being sort of hunted so mm. it's it's just um, I guess little things that just come through in the game little things we sort of feel a bit strongly about yeah, um, yeah so I think it's great to have that kind of depth to something you know uh, it right, really makes a big right. difference to people like me right. um, so Hunes, um, I can I can just about tell from some of these boards. Is this prototype at the yes, moment? It's just prototype at the moment. Um, we're going to Kickstarter on the first of October, barring holding holding thumbs, holding fingers, whatever. Um, yeah, hoping that uh, and, and we can get all this stuff into a nice production form for everybody. Awesome, first of October, hopefully. Um, uh, do you know a rough price point at the moment? So the rough pr price point at the moment, we're still finalizing the negotiations, is around about $100 for the base set, uh -huh. which is pretty much everything here that you see. Um, so quite a lot of things. Yeah, and, um, tons of stuff. Yeah, that de obviously makes de would depend on the final negotiations. Sure, but, totally. Uh, I guess that's what our hope is. And people can find Hunes on the Facebook, I believe. Yes, can on not? Facebook, and there's a website, Hunes.com. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time. I do appreciate it. Thanks. Um, I hope that yeah, everything goes super well. Thanks, I'll definitely Matt. be looking at it and uh, and probably getting it. I've, I've no doubt I'm going to get it. Love <laughs> Thanks, it. Thanks, Matt. It just looks so interesting. Thanks, well, thanks very much for your time. Have a great day.
Thanks. Ahoy hoy! Um, I'm here with Tyson. Um, we want to tell you about a thing that's cool. What's this thing that's cool? Uh, we are running a 24 hour board game marathon. Nice. To benefit uh, Bartholomew County and Farmers Cheer Fund. It is a, uh, it's the oldest charity in Bartholomew County. Nice. Uh, we raise money and toys to donate to children that normally wouldn't get a Christmas. Why? So we assume we all play games. You know, we, we're just big kids with toys anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's a great chance to get back to the community and um, get some toys for them. Right? So, yeah, it'll be uh, November 15th. November um, 15th. Remember that date. 24 hours, non-stop, or as much as you can show much up. You can handle. Right? But yeah, so we're, uh, we're just going to play games for a full day and see how much money and how many toys we can raise. And where's this place? This is out of Columbus, Indiana. Columbus, Indiana. Yeah. Not, not a, a different not Columbus. Not Ohio. Not a different Indiana. Columbus, yeah, Indiana. Yeah. Yeah. Columbus, is there based in a shop? Um, it's not based in a shop. Um, last year we were in a church. They donated um, uh, their whole actual uh, area there for us to play in for the 24 hours. It was great. Uh, we're working on trying to raise, uh, do some other events to raise more money this year. There's um, a giant commons area down in uh, downtown Columbus. Nice. So we're trying to get a, a lot bigger venue. You know, nice. we're here at Gen Con trying to get a lot of sponsors and stuff involved so we can actually grow this sure. from, you know, 1200 bucks to let's give $5,000. Yeah, you know, why not? So let's really let's do it. Yeah. Um, where's the best place that people can find you and get involved? Is there a Facebook page? Or um, we do have a Facebook event, and it's one of those uh, silly numbers. Uh -huh. But you can go to uh, the Bitly site, 24-hour uh, board gameathon. 24-hour Bitly. 24 hour board game a thon. Absolutely. 24 2 4 numbers. Correct. 2 4 board game a thon. Yeah. Bitly. Facebook is terrible for that. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Sorry, go and check it out. Uh, donate money, time, whatever you can. Absolutely. Anything's appreciated. Share us on Facebook and just get more people to see it. Good times. Thank you very much for your time, mate. Thank you. I, I hope it all goes really well. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Thanks. Uh, you, if, if you're over in Columbus, yeah. Indiana, that one, uh, then uh, find it, be involved. Okay? You heard. Okie dokie. So here we have uh, Aeronautica something, which is the new uh, flying around game from uh, GW. So planes. Like, this guy looks super cool. So there's like twin mounted last cannons on the front, a couple of heavy bolters. They need to do Epic, and they need to do it now, which just makes me want Epic more. And then down here, oh, where my knees break, we have the Lizard Men for Blood Bowl. And we good, it's Blood Bowl. And these guys look really cool. I love this guy. He's using his tongue to catch the ball. Love it. Super cool. Unfortunately, the reflection from the thingy is causing me issues. Hope it comes out okay. And up here, we've got uh, whatever the new Shade Spire thing is called. And we've got some beastmen and some elves. Good times. Over there, we've got more paints. Wow, we've got some big time, huge, multi-posable uh, Space Marines. And then down here we've got some little chibi dudes. If that's your kind of thing, then great. Weirdness. Ahoy, so here we are, end of uh, Jen McConnington. That's what's left of the Wild West Exodus booth. We're waiting for some crates to come so we can pack it all away. This is post Gen Con. Uh, there's still some signs up, still people putting things away, but by and large, everything's gone. Just up there, we've still got an inflatable plane for dust. Um, we've got some signage over there for Century Golem Edition Eastern Mountains. Um, what else have we got? Boxes of things. We've got lots of boxes of things wrapped up in cling film or saran wrap, as I believe they call it over here. Um, here we have the vending machine for exploding kittens. 
Pardon me. Uh, with lots of stuff on there. And that's it. I mean, that's it. It's drink, it's drink on. It's over. It's done. Fucked. Absolutely fucked. Uh, <coughs> going back to the hotel in a minute. Hopefully play some board games, do some packing. Probably just do some packing and sleeping instead. And then we've got all of the travel back home. Um, but it's, it's going to be a goodbye from me. And it's going to be a goodbye from all of this, from all of the Gen Con. Bye Gen Con. Bye. And bye to you nerds. No, I didn't get all of the filming done, but it's only because I'm running demos too. So hopefully you had a good time watching however long this video was. So you want to get home, England? Me, me, me. Ahoy, hoy. Uh, I'm in. I'm in my hotel room. Uh, just about to get ready for bed. Just about to pack all my stuff away, and I thought maybe, just maybe, you guys might like to see a little uh, example of some of the things I've got. So I spread it all out, and it's, I don't want to call it a haul video, because that's wank, but, you know, hopefully we'll see most of it on the channel, if not all of it. Um, so I'll just get around to showing it to you. So here, unsurprisingly, I did end up picking up some Wild West Exodus bits. Because, um, why wouldn't I? Uh, here we've got two boxes of constructed menials already got 30, this is another 10 to make it 40, in new 1.9 only 10 points each, so 40 only costs 400 points still leaves me 1100 points for lots of good enlightened things, so expect full on horde mode um, here we have got some vermilion sentinels, because I picked up the um, amber clade box a little while ago uh, you get two in there, they can go in units of four, so I thought I might as well get another couple here, now for my Hexies, we've got Lokes, who is a bear lady with a double-thinged minigun. We've also got a couple of Wendigos who are Carcosa as well. Uh, yeah, because I've got um, Carcosa X, I've actually got the, what's the word I'm thinking of? Krampus Rex Mini, so I'll use that, uh, so I can get some Carcosa on the table. Uh, that's all the Wexit of stuff I bought. Um, here we have a bunch of stuff for Aristea. Um, up the top there we have the neoprene mat because uh, you know here at the Bowhammer we do love a new, good neoprene mat. Um, here we've got the brand new uh, Reckless Hearts which is currently unavailable. Uh, it was a pre-release at Gen Con. It's about another month for it to be out so you expect to see those on the channel. Here we've got Human Fate um, because Straw really liked them so I bought a copy for him so he can paint them up how he wants. Uh, there's two copies of the Valkyrie Elite Bodyguard, which is a con exclusive. Uh, can be used in Defiance and other things as well. Um, one for me, one for Straw, because we both like the model, because we're nerds. Um, down here we've got some scoring zones and ziggurats uh, to make the board look pretty, because um, it's nice to have those things. And here we've got Master of Puppets Minion Pack, which is the Master of Puppets expansion, which has got your little controlled minions. Um, so they're like 3D little tokens, and they've got like cartoony images, the box art on there, uh, which I think will look really nice on the on the pitch, pitch on the thing. Here we have the Cyberpunk Jumpstart Kit uh, for the new. Um, it's like a little starter for the new Cyberpunk thing. It's kind of for me, but it's also mostly for Nick. Uh, Nick, you will have seen on the channel on our role playing videos. Uh, we play Cyberpunk on a Tuesday night sometimes, so I thought he'd really like this. So it's a present for him, but he has to run it. That, that's the deal. So I'm, I'm going to buy it for him, give it to him, and he's going to have to run it. New edition of Cyberpunk, uh, which bridges the gap between Cyberpunk 2020 and the computer game Cyberpunk 77, uh, 2077. Uh, so hopefully he'll enjoy that. Um, I, I'm pretty sure he'll know 99% of the information there. Um, but, you know, why not, right? Um, over here we've got some board gamey goodness. Um, here we've got Nemo's War, which is a board game I've liked the look of for a little while. Um, but they had a little bonus with all the expansions and some cloth baggy things and a little badge. So I picked it up while I was here. Uh, it's a solo game. You play Captain Nemo, travelling around the world, doing things, sinking ships, looking for treasure, all that kind of stuff. So you will be seeing that on the channel at some point. 
it's kind of a Euro style crunchy solo game uh, so that should be fun up here we've got a game called Euphoria which I have not heard of um, and there's the expansion which was released just at Gen Con um, it's set in this dystopian world and you've got workers and you're trying to kind of either do an uprising or, or something like that um, hugely recommended it by the War Cradle crew especially Stu we went over there, had a look, and I thought, you know what, I was after a board game, didn't know what one I wanted, so um, he twisted my arm, and hopefully it'll be really good, but I'm really looking forward to it. It's kind of Euro-style worker placement thing, um, set in a dystopian thing, love a bit of dystopia, uh, so that should be fun. Uh, down here we have got Star Wars Rebellion Rise of the Empire expansion. Uh, we have played uh, Star Wars Rebellion on the channel, really good game, really enjoyed it. Um, this adds a few things, but especially it adds to combat. We did find that combat was a little bit like blah, um, but apparently this is kind of an auto-include kind of thing, you know, for the purposes of combat. You've also got the um, Empire stuff uh, from Rogue One, but also Jabba the Hutt, because who doesn't want Jabba the Hutt, right? Um, lots of things like that. Uh, and then lastly, we've got a few little bits, just some dice and little bits. Shot glass for me and Straw to remember Gen Con 2019. Um, there's one in there and one there. Um, also, I picked up some lovely dice. Uh, I've got some Chessex Vortex green ones. Just really like them. I've already got the Vortex oranges, uh, but I wanted something in case I want to do. You know, if I'm running a roll and keep my dice different, I thought they, they just look really nice. They're really bright. Um, you can really see the colour. Um, and read the numbers super easy which is a big deal I think there are so many lovely um, dice out there um, and there's a lot of really gorgeous ones but some of them are just really hard to read which isn't my bag at all saw some cheap orange, bright orange dice they're really vibrant kind of almost day glow orange again really easy to read I've almost got a collection of orange dice now um, and here are some Gen Con exclusive dice um, I think there was only about 200 sets total um, so I managed to get them, they're kind of like halves these dice but actually three layers red, orange and yellow um, they did have some black and silver ones but obviously Battle Hammer we had to go um, the red and the orange ones, you can just about see there Gen Con Gen Con, special Gen Con dice baby, set for me and I knew that if I didn't get a set for straw he'd probably be, have a little cry uh, which would make me laugh but my life wouldn't be worth living so hopefully he enjoys a couple of little souvenirs from the Gen Con. Um, so that's it. Uh, I've got some American sweets to eat on the plane. Some caramel M&Ms and a Baby Ruth bar. Which I'm sure I'll super enjoy. Um, but that... Oops, get the light out of the way. That is going to be my uh, Gen Con video done. Um, going to pack. Have an early night. It is now... Half past ten already. Time flies when you're having fun. Um, reasonably early start tomorrow. Um, getting on a plane, going back home. Going to sleep for a week. Um, really looking forward to trying all this stuff out. Getting some games in. Um, in fact, even in the, uh, for a Euphoria, in the expansion, there are rules for solo play. So that's super nice. And also some refined rules. It's kind of clarifies a few things and whatnot so looking forward to trying that out um been wanting to play like a euro game kind of thing for a little while uh, it does play two quite well apparently it plays one which uh, is nice for you know me if i'm on my own some all also with straw um yeah plenty of stuff to keep me going for a little while absolutely shattered gonna do some packing uh, if you want to help the channel out you can by doing all the usual things in the top corner um, and uh, in the comments down below uh, in the doobly doo there will be ways to help us out via Patreon or whatever you want to do if you don't that's fine but have a little look but the number one thing you can do if you do nothing else after all of this video don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked it and want to subscribe if you don't like it and don't want to subscribe you don't have to like and subscribe but we would like it if you liked and subscribed and until next time stay hammered do 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 do